wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyil huda salatan wassalaman alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yaumil fasli wal hisab amma ba'du uh, respected uh, brother uh, moderator uh, respected uh, my colleague dr ghazali jaafar whom i have known understand appreciate internalize the very meaning of the sharia inshallah with the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi tawfiqih wa bi hidayatih nastati an nastakshifa maani wa afaq ash-shari'ati hukman wa maqasidan wa siyasat wa tawjihat li'anna ash-shari'ata kama ta'lamun la tanhasiru في الاحكام الشرعيه لا تنحسر في الاحكام الخمسه الخطا الفاحش ان نعتبر الاحكام الخمسه هي الشريعه او بالعكس كل من هذه المفاهيم هي من المفاهيم الخاطئه الشائعه this is the common mistake by most if not all student of sharia thinking that sharia is about limiting understanding to the five categories of hukum and also to five categories of its feel of life from ibadat all the way to jinayat and international relation six or seven uh, discipline altogether based on the classification by the classical jurists of our scholars They were not wrong in the past when they devoted themselves to extensively write and describe and prescribe the very classification of fiqh into six or seven classification ahkamul al taharat wal ibadat wal al munakahat wal muamalat wal jinayat wal alaqat duwaliya wal ahkam maliyah they, they were not wrong but we were wrong in understanding the whole landscape of the study of the sharia and i have the reason of saying that uh, in the next few minutes inshallah so sisters and brothers tonight we would like to revisit we would like to open up our mind a bit to relook into the way we look into our sharia the sharia should be the most significant and impactful piece of knowledge that can change our life can change our community can change the whole universe because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the word sharia metaphorically from the very meaning of at-tariq ila al-ma the path to a water place for the survival of humanity The Quran never or Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala never invented the word sharia from the heaven. The word sharia was already used among the Arabs. The Quran just reinforced the very meaning of sharia as understood by the Arabs, by the pagans, by the unbelievers before the coming of Islam so that they can relate themselves to the sharia. The sharia is a way of life as if the water is the source of life wa ja'alna min al-ma'i kull shay'in hayy that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created every living organism the bacteria even even the virus the small bacteria needs water to live the same goes to the sharia The Sharia does not talk about ibadat or jinayat or alaqat duwali and full stop. No. Sharia should be functional, should be relevant in each and every aspect of life. In the in the fiqh or jurisprudence of maintenance and uh, construction, the design, best practices, we have to move away from the very classical definition of the six or seven classification of fiqh that is the first symptom 
of our decline. Because by focusing on these six or seven classification, we are detached from the whole universe. We are no longer relevant in this world. Sharia can only give the answer in matters which relate or which are relevant to these six particular vertical of life. The vertical of life, as you know, are not limiting. Everything comes to this world from the technology, from the Bitcoin, from the best practices, know your customer, money laundering, the index of corruption, the, the quality of life-saving, the ambulances, how it relate to Hafzul and Napas to protect the life and how to protect the wealth, and how to protect uh, the very meaning of environment, Islam or Sharia should have an answer to that. But we were not trained to think along that line. In fact, in our university, when I was a student, we were trained to focus and limit ourselves to this five or six or seven classification. I think the time has come to change that dimension. Uh, I still recall when... Uh, I was taught uh, fiqh al-mu'amalat, uh, and before that, uh, uh, fiqh al-mu'amalat is the second, third year of the university, in, in Kuwait University, and uh, I can still recall in the first year, we, we, we were taught by the lecturer uh, on fiqh al, uh, al-ibadat, uh, the ritual uh, worship, and everyone enjoyed the class very much. The lecturer and the student because we were practical enough. We knew what we talked about. Then second year, we moved on to Ahkam al-Munakahat, the family law. Only the, only the lecturer enjoyed the, the lesson, <laughs> not the student. They have no idea whatsoever. Divorce, inheritance, too far away from them. They just memorize, you know. You memorize a lot, you got A, but you cannot internalize the very meaning of setting up a family, the rights and liabilities, the psychology of it, and the, either good or bad, uh, you know, family to be set up uh, at the end of the day. Still good. At least the lecturer understood. The third year, we talked about mudaraba, about musharaka, capital in kind, capital in cash, valuation, arm's length, uh, impairment of capital, uh, this word impairment, in the book of fiqh, uh, they call it al-tandid uh, al-hukmi. We can give the profit prior to maturity by putting the valuation to the net asset of the venture. The lecturer gives you the, the, good les the good lesson, but neither the lecturer nor the student understood in the classroom. We were very theoretical, but we have moved on. Alhamdulillah, with the coming of Isaid Finan, we can put the very meaning of each term of fiqh by putting in the new dimension of it. Name it. You, put any, you take any financial report of any banks, you can pick up the term and you can put the sharia flavor to it. If you can't, blame yourself. Don't blame the sharia. Okay? Accrual. Cash accounting. There should be sharia uh, connotation to that. I'm not going to lecture on that, okay? Don't worry. Uh, this is your, your job and the job of your lecturer to really bring you back to the real meaning of Sharia in this particular five or six vertical of life. But tonight, I wanted to move beyond that. I wanted to share with you we are transforming, but not good enough. We are still slow in our transformation. Let me challenge everyone to move faster and to take the challenge to become uh, a greater... Uh, you know, thinker. Uh, I think uh, James Collin, uh, the, the author of the best-selling uh, book, uh, Good to Great and Built to Last, he was always saying, good is not good enough. You have to be moving to, to be great person. There are many good people, many good university, many good intellectual, many good government, many good hospital, but there were few who are great hospital companies. And he started to compare his book, 30 companies, companies which are good and companies which are great. Coca-Cola versus Pepsi. Uh, uh, Samsung versus what? NASA versus what? 
Both of, the, both of them are good, but one of them is better than the other. So this is the mentality of, of how people can move. We have to take the challenge and move forward. Uh, if you are good, alhamdulillah, sometimes we are below the mark. And for that matter, you have to work harder. So the first catalyst of moving forward is the mindset. In fact, uh, we are nothing but of two... Uh, uh, the DNA of human being, be it a lawyer, a judge, a scholar, a da'i, a trader, a politician, an NGO, activist, we are governed by two uh, DNA of each and every one personality. The first is mindset, the way you think. And the second is the attitude. When you got the understanding wrong, you become a wrong personality all the way until you die. And sometimes, you got it right. You are well intellectually uh, capable. You have read all the books. You are open-minded. You're not having a fixed mindset. Your mindset is flexible. It's growing mindset, they call it, uh, in the psychology kind of knowledge. But your attitude does not tally with your mindset. You become very negative. And sometimes you become very conservative when coming when come to Islam. In fact, as we speak, the Western civilization they prefer to have the conservative Islam in this world, not the dynamic Islam in this world. Because once we become idealist and perfectionist and conservative, we are not winning the battle of the world. You, have, you can read many reports in the West from between the two lines. They would prefer Islam to be relevant in this world by having the conservative version of Islam. And I will explain to you the very meaning of conservative Islam. Look very appealing. Okay? It's good to have a very conservative Islam, meaning limited by the four, six uh, vertical, the way we analyze things, the way we fight things, just within the parameter that we used to have for the last 1,400 years ago, not moving forward to venture into a new aspect. So the attitude and the mindset. In between the two, I have seen uh, traveling uh, across the world, talking to many scholars of the world, the psyche. Sometimes you have the good mindset, sometimes you have the good attitude, but you have your own personality. The, your psyche is... Psyche is the, the internal development of a person. I don't like this product. I don't like this color. I don't like this type of people. I don't like this kind of uh, motivation. Talk. I don't like this kind of documentary. I don't like this kind of script and narration. The psyche. It happened a lot in, in the same banking finance. I don't like Atawaruk, for example. I don't like credit card. They are compliant, but they create consumerism in, the, uh, in this uh, in this world. Let the people go to conventional bank and take conventional credit card. But for me, I won't allow credit card to be approved under Shara principle over my dead body. I've, I've heard that. Over my dead body. This psyche. And sometimes we can pick up the psyche of scholars from the words. I don't disapprove this product. This is the psyche word. I don't disapprove this product. If I were him, and believing that the product is halal and good for the community, I would simply say, I approve the product. But by using double negative, means he's also negative. <laughs> so I have learned, I can talk on that, the mindset, attitude, and psyche uh, more and more. In fact, I'm writing, inshallah, uh, the first ever book on the anatomy of fatwa and the psyche of the muftis. The psyche of the muftis. This is the biggest problem in our community. Not the knowledge, not the attitude, but the psyche. Under the mindset, many people believe that sharia is about one solution fits all. One solution fits all. Al-hal al-wahid huwa al-hal li jami' al-qadaya. 
And this is a big, the biggest mistake. Sharia is not about one solution solving all the problem. One solution fits all. In fact, Sharia in the history of Islamic law, you have studied Tariqut Tashir al Islami, you have studied the Mazahib, you have studied the Usul Fiqh al Muqaran, the comparative uh, study of Usul Fiqh. When I taught uh, Dr. Ghazali and many other great lecturers in this university, I opened up their mind. You cannot be limiting yourself to one school of legal theory. You have to understand Usul Fiqh al Muqaran, the comparative legal theory, which I did in the master class MCL. Uh, I have, I think I'm very happy because I was the first in Malaysia to put a very comprehensive course outline on Usul Fiqh al Muqaran. Al Muqaran not only between the, the Usul Fiqh al Islami and the Mazahib al, al, al Arba, but also between the modern Orientalists and the Islamists plus the classical way of understanding the legal theory of Usul Fiqh. So one solution fits all should be taken out from your mind. In fact, it can be very possible in one, sol in one case, we have more than one solution based on the fact of the case. Sometimes the Prophet wasallam give the right of custody, al hadana to the mother, sometimes to the father, sometimes to a third party altogether. And this is very interesting. In the hadith of the Prophet, he was asked a few times, what do you think would be the best deed among all the deeds? He gave plenty of answers. Birrul walidain, al-jihad, spending for the sake of Allah, this and that, based on the, vari uh, the variability or the variable of the case and the person who asked the question. And perhaps do those, who, those who came for the session, he wanted to impress the other people, I think you are bad in this sector, go and do this sector and, and redeem yourself to become a good Muslim. And, and, and the Sunnah is full of this uh, uh, you know, uh, example. Number two, idealism. It's easy to sell idealism. You can go to the mimbar, you can go to the lecture hall, I can do the same thing. I can preach, I can give the sermon, go for idealism. The perfect... Uh, version of Islam. It's easy to do that. But it is harder to be a realist. To put the nusus, the text of the Quran in their proper context with the proper dose of it. Shara is about putting the text of the Quran and the Sunnah in their proper uh, context finawaziliha and with the proper uh, quantity of it no less no more okay so this is the very meaning of idealism and how could we become a realist we have to be a realist sharia scholar and sharia student at the end of the day and the last one under the catalyst uh, how to move forward is to have a, a gross mindset not a fixed mindset a fixed mindset is someone who is not willing to change his mindset until he die. Imam Shafi changed his mindset. Imam Malik changed his mindset. And the other great scholars, sometimes they have changed and the students have changed a lot after the death of the founder. And this is normal in our lifetime. It is not unusual to change your point of view, but it is very odd and very unacceptable to remain with your point of view though the variable has changed. I have changed a lot myself. In the last uh, 23 years in banking finance, I have revisited my own point of view and I have evolved, I have transformed. And don't be worried about that phenomenon. You are going to do the same thing. Don't resist to change. For a good cause, of course. Don't change for the sake of changing. Okay? Change for a better cause, for a better reason, for a better justification in your Sharia mind. The current state of affairs. How much time do I have until 12 o'clock?
Okay. Uh, current state of affairs. Let me uh, share with you what do I feel about the current syllabus, not only at this university but across the globe, from Al Azhar to Kuwait, when I got my first degree in Saudi Arabia, all the way to many parts of the world. We were taught and lectured extensively on fiqh and very few on the discipline of fatwa and what more on qada, the judgment of the previous judges in Islamic history. You are lucky because you are uh, positioned in this law faculty, so you come across a bit of fiqh, a bit of fatwa and a bit of qada at the end of the day. But I can bet, it's Sharia compliant betting now, I can bet that you have not gone through extensively on the literature of fatwa and also the qada. In fact, the one who can open up the mind is not fiqh. Fiqh is academic writing. Someone were to write from his own uh, desktop, if you like, from his own cocoon of environment. Not all of them, but most of them. But the fatwa is basically based on the fact of the case. The fatwa didn't come from the vacuum. It came from the fact of the case. I'm not sure how much uh, time you have spent on the literature of fatwa. I would argue, uh, I was in the university before, I discovered this quite late, I transformed. I, toward the end of my uh, stay at the university, I started teaching my student, Pat Dr. Ghazali is one of them, to look into the fatwa literature. In fact, I was recommending to them, you cannot graduate from this university and from the study of Sharia until and unless you have picked up some reading of Al-Fatawa or Al-Fatwa Al-Mu'arib It's a good book by Ahmad Wansharizi, one of the great mufti in the Morocco. He has compiled 500 years of fatwa. Al-Mu'arib and Fatawa Ahli Afrika wal Andalus. We have a copy in your library. One of the best collection, but I don't think you have ever heard that name. What more uh, to take a book and have a look at the book. And this is how the Orientalists were more excellent than us because they didn't pay attention to fiqh. Fiqh for them has no value. Don't take me wrong, okay? Because they wanted to be realists. They wanted to know the case of uh, water pollution in the city of Fes in Morocco when uh, the river was polluted and it affected the quality of the water to become drinkable water and the case was brought not to the faqih, not to the juris, to the mufti of the town. And the mufti was so clever and he was asking back uh, the people who are the users and the, and the stakeholders of this uh, river, alongside the river, and it was discovered there are three types of uh, users during his time, the, industri the industrialists, a sunnah, the one who used the water to produce some production for commercial reason, and the farmers, the normal use of uh, water for the irrigation and the farming industry, and the third, the household use, uh, you know, using the water for uh, personal consumption. And the water or the river was polluted, uh, actually, and the mufti was giving the fatwa, those who have used the water for uh, uh, commercial reason, he has to put money back to the community to clean the water. And he quoted the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Al-Kharaju bil-Daman. For you to earn the profit, you have to take the liability. And in fact, we have many legal maxim, al-ni'matu biqadil niqmah, and there are three legal maxim in Majalla al-Hakam Adiliyah. Uh, if you have read uh, Majalla al hakam Adiliyah. So this is how the, the fatwa was, was so active in the society. If you have not done so, I would encourage every one of you to start going to the library and pick up any fatwa from that interesting book. There are about 11 or 10 volumes of, of Al-Ma'yal al-Mu'arib. Al 
the name of the book al mi'yar al mu'rib and fatawa ahli afrikiya wal andalus okay very interesting book one of the best book we survive uh, you know the 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 manuscript it was edited by a group of orientalists sponsored by the government of morocco so the third is qada the fourth maqasid al sharia maqasid al sharia was rarely taught in the university and if the subject was to be taught i'm sure it was taught to you it took only about two lectures or three lectures and you are done I don't think this is a fair treatment of maqasid al-sharia. Maqasid al-sharia should be overarching discipline of sharia. It should be analyzed deeper and deeper all the way because it is much more powerful than fiqh. It's much more powerful than fatwa. It's much more powerful than the qada. Because maqasid al-sharia are meant to be evergreen. Again, I have taken the liberty Uh, on myself to write a book on maqasid inshallah almost uh, ready but i'm bringing the maqasid from different perspective uh, from the data perspective uh, maqasid as sharia the face and the voice of the sharia embedded with big data analytics because you know maqasid as sharia cannot work in the in in isolation from the data of life in fact the very definition of الضروريات والحاجيات التحسينيات can you recall the very definition of الضروريات can you recall full mark what is ضروريات can I take uh, the best among you 3.9 CGPA I know uh, help me uh, Hebrew Hebrew No, I'm, I'm not asking you personally. Anyone? La qiyama bi hayatin nas bidun What is the key word of this definition? You have that definition. I have my shatibi. I like shatibi definition better than your definition. But they are the same. But look at the definition. What is the key word? لا قيامة بحياتي في حياة لي حياة حياة من من هم الناس how many of them who are these people data which sector of the community are they the industrialists the farmers are they the unprivileged people are they are they are they are they you cannot go for a group of people unless you have the data those who are using public tra- public transportation different from those who are driving the car to the city when it come to toll and employment and uh, cost of living so you have to go back to data asha tb uh, as you know uh, an authority on maqasid i like his definition very straightforward he said adhururiyat is something that when you neglect doing it or setting up the institution to promote daruriyat each and every one of us will be suffering each and every one jamia on nas again the word nas jamia how do you know jamia data when you pull up the scholarship from the student how many will be affected when you put the limitation to borrow from the bank how many will be affected let me continue the uh, uh, hajiyat definition he said If you do if you don't do that most of the people will be suffering aghlabun nas tahsiniyat a few of them will be affected so a few most and all need the data you cannot simply be emotional i think this is maqasid eh? we have to uh, uh, we have to uh, prescribe the mandatory hiv screening for the young couple to get married based on the data it used it used to be uh, optional but it become mandatory because based on the data perhaps one day will come we need to have compulsory health insurance in malaysia nowadays we don't have that policy but one day will come due to some variable then we have to see whether that is part of maqasid or otherwise 
the same goes to some other aspect of protecting your life, security, and whatnot. Bottom line, brothers and sisters, we cannot be looking into maqasid without having a full data. In fact, the, the very meaning of maqasid is based on istiqra, the empirical research. Empirical is a scientific methodology based on observation of each and every element in life. And why Hafzul Din, Hafzul Mal, and Hafzul al, al Nafas they become or they, 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 they are on the center stage because they got the support of so many Quranic verses and the Quran and Hadith. The more they got the support, the more they become of Maqasid. And for that matter, Maqasid should not be limited to five or seven or eight. It should be extended based on the data of life and the data of the Quran and the Sunnah. So, inshallah, my book will, be, will try to unlock some of the uh, missing link in, 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 in the, in the Maqasid. Sharia is also about policies, putting the right policies. Sometimes, hukum, fiqh, fatwa, and qada, or even maqasid cannot solve the problem. We need to have the policy, the best practices. Sharia would give you the inspiration to solve the problem. Okay? Uh, in Indonesia, Jakarta, for example, to, in order to avoid massive traffic jam in Jalan Sudirman, the main road in Jakarta, they have imposed uh, a new law. You cannot enter the city between 6 to, let's say, 10 a.m. unless uh, you have full board, full, full passenger in the car, five of them. If one, you cannot come. You, yeah, you may come, but you have to pay the penalty too. This is policies to avoid the, ex, the no, no Quranic dalil, nothing. You can put la haraja wa la dira. You can put everything, but they are not direct to the issue of, of, uh, of fighting against the traffic jam in that big city unless, until and unless they are going to build like we did in Malaysia, the proper LRT, MRT, which are still under construction. So this is the policies to manage the problem of, of uh, you know, Ebola or Zika of... Uh, employment, of housing, affordable housing, we have to look from the policy perspective. But in Indonesia, they become clever, the Jakarta people, they know that was the law. So there are many uh, children standing alongside the road every single day, and you pay them one rupiah for them to jump into the car, and they drop them at the end of the road. So they beat the system. Are you following? Yeah. Are you doing that? So this is how people overcome the problem uh, to avoid the policies of the government. Our treatment of the legacy. I need another 15 minutes. I will stop. Then we open for discussion. In the past, or at the current uh, moment, we are not putting things in the right perspective and many of our understanding out of context. To argue something which is out of context is easy to do. I can give you many examples in the writing of the scholars in the argument of uh, you know, uh, intelligentsia among the Muslim scholars. We tend to be out of the context. Our argument was superb. Quran, Hadith, legal maxim, or the istidilal of and, and whatnot. But we are out of the context. And perhaps failure to pinpoint the new mindset in the past, in the legacy of the past. I'll give you three examples. In the, in the literature of Waqaf, for example, we were again lectured to establish and to create a Waqaf, a foundation, if you like. And uh, that was our focus, create, build the mosque, build the school, build the, even the graveyard. But we never talked about how to sustain and maintain the mosque when it was developed, after it was developed. There was no wakaf on the cash flow to maintain the, the, the mosque. And after building the mosque, people are not coming back to help the mosque because they thought, if I were to put my money, cash, just to repaint the mosque and to change the roof of the mosque and to build up the, uh, the foundation, again, the flood, whatever, it is not deemed as part of wakaf. Our mindset is wrong. 
And, uh, and we miss many literature in the past saying that in Waqaf, in Waqaf, the administrator of Waqaf, the call a nazir has the right approved by the mufti or a judge for him to liquidate, to securitize a portion of the Waqaf asset to get cash money. They call Tawriq. The word Tawriq didn't come to our mind. And in the last 1,400 years, or perhaps in, in our own time, we got stuck with Waqaf asset. We cannot sell the Waqaf asset because we were told we cannot sell Waqaf asset. Though to develop the asset altogether. Perhaps we have, let's say, 100 uh, acres or hectares of land uh, being Waqaf, but we cannot sell one third of the Waqaf because it's not permissible under Sharia. In the uh, Islamic literature in the past, there are many references saying otherwise. Otherwise, all the Waqaf asset will be stagnant. And this is how the, uh, the way we look thing. We have to read line by line, brothers and sisters. Don't read too fast, just to score the exam, of course. I don't blame you. I did the same thing uh, when I was student. But the moment you have the time, go back and read each and every text of the scholars and the fuqaha uh, with uh, a kind of inquisitive mind to extract the real meaning of the sharia. In fact, uh, in, the, in the government of uh, Ottoman, they will allow the Waqaf founder or the Waqaf uh, trustee or administrator to finance using the Waqaf asset through lease and lease back. They call Mursat in the, in the case of Ottoman because they need the money to develop. There's no point of having huge asset base, Waqaf asset base, without having the ability to build one on top of the land to give the benefit. You know, the one who gave the wakaf, they wanted to see the land to be developed. But how could we develop if he himself didn't put the cash? That's why I have found some authority to say it is not permissible, it's not encouraged for the wakaf founder to give a piece of land, a piece of land without some cash money and without having some asset which is income generating asset like orchard, plantation, so that they can use the money to build the mosque. Otherwise, it's another cost to the mosque. Who's going to build the mosque without having the proper fund available? And I mentioned in some other lecture, the forward lease. The scholars in the past have allowed you to have lease uh, on asset which is to be constructed in the future, which is the, the minority point of view, which is good to encourage project financing in this current world. Only two scholars out of so many scholars in the past have approved the practice of forward list al ijara al mausufa fi zima al ijara al mudafa al mustaqbal to allow uh, you know the, the modern society to start charging the, the rental, though the asset is still under construction. Now this concept has been used a lot in our asset finance uh, uh, products uh, to build the hospital, the school, the, the, the power plant, the highways and whatnot. The modern trend at the moment, there are many good development, but I have my own view on those development. I think some scholars wanted to create new uh, uh, writing, which are very, very encouraging. Uh, people are talking about fiqh al muwatana the fiqh of uh, the nationality, fiqh al muwazana and many other things. The latest book uh, due to the uh, phenomenon of refugees in our Islamic countries, one third, if not half of the refugees are Muslim nowadays. Very sad scenario. Okay? Half of the refugees of the world, if not more, are Muslim. And we do have the hukum on that. Ahkam al in. And there's a good scholar, I think uh, last year he published a book on refugee. This is a book that we need to you know, articulate and evolve. Fiq um, al-Aqaliyat, there's many people written on minority. When, we, when, when you live in Europe, there could be some hukum, some ahkam al-Shara'iyah, which are different from our practices because they have to give some tolerance. You cannot impose, uh, remember the idealism just now, we cannot take one fiqh, 
one hukum and imposed on Muslims living in Norway or Sweden because they are very minority and they are living in a very uh, challenging legal environment. So this is Ahkam uh, al al and uh, okay. And the uh, fiqh al miyah the 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 hukum on on water treatment uh, power plant how do we uh, treat our raw water coming from river and lake to the power plant uh, sorry water uh, water plant to uh, clean it using chemical or membrane technology which is using a certain technology to save the cost and to supply the affordable and drinkable water to the society. There's hukum for that. In fact, uh, water is uh, one of the big themes in the Quran. The theme of the Quran is about water and water. Water for human, water for cattle, water for uh, plantation, river, uh, rain. Allah mentioned about water more than 200 times or 300 times in my own research under Maqasid book just now. I pick up the data on the water. It seemed to me water is the most important asset in this world much more powerful than money. So this is something that we have missed and we have to start writing and articulating the new fiqh uh, uh, in the world. Uh, in my own fatwa, uh, which is quite controversial, uh, I have said uh, in many seminars and conferences, hush financing. Can we finance someone, take the money and go for hush, though um, he is not financially capable yet to go to Hajj. But by taking the financing of, of 10,000 or 15,000, so he can pay back on installment. Rather than uh, saving uh, every month 100 ringgit, so it will take about 10 years or 5 years to go to Hajj, subject to queue, of course. Uh, the, 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 the priority uh, of, of going to Hajj. I was saying that uh, my argument is simple, brothers and sisters. In the past, our community, our uh, old generation, most of them, if not, if not all of them, they were traders and they were entrepreneurs. So the cash flow is not fixed. They might get money, they might not get money. So the meaning of Walillahi uh, ala nasi hijjul bayt man ilahi sabila. The word istitoa has been defined as having the money now in your pocket for you to go to Hajj. Otherwise, don't borrow and don't take the financing to go to Hajj. That was in the past. In our modern time, after the, uh, the, the industry revolution in the 18th century, when people moved away from their uh, kampong, from their villages to big cities, they become, in fact, nowadays, we become salaried personality. We are salaried people. So we have the, uh, the, the steady income stream in the future. So we may go to the bank, take the murabaha or tawaruk for 10,000 and put the money in Tabung Haji and become uh, qualified next day. Whether we can do that, uh, it's up to, to you to, to, to measure and to judge. But for me, there's no harm in doing that. In fact, in other parts of the world, in, in Turkey, in Saudi, in Middle East, they have a very a good, uh, in Sudan, they have good uh, financing for Hajj and Umrah. What is missing at the moment and what is next? I mean, I would like to respectfully submit to you that uh, the way we look the Sharia at the moment, from the top, if you look from the top, you cannot see the whole thing of Sharia. You see the good thing of Sharia. You see the idealistic point of Sharia. You think everything is good. Shamil, Kamil, Islam is a way of life. Islam is this. Islam is a solution to human being. Islam is this. But when asked further, how do you solve the issue of employment in the society? How do you solve the issue of right to education? How do you solve the issue of pollution? How do you solve the issue of security? This is the theme of the Quran. The Quran never mentioned one word without having meaning. There must be a meaning for that. 
How do you ensure the supply chain in the society from the farmers all the way to the port? And there are many hadiths said, don't interfere in the open market. Don't come and try to buy the raw material from the farmers without having the good knowledge of the market practice, which is not happening nowadays. So we have not solved the problem. The farmers continue to be poor all the way. Not in other parts of the world. The farmers in many parts of the world, they are the richest among the richest because they practice the Sharia. Whatever we have uh, you know, learned in our hadith, this is a new thing of understanding the Sharia. So we have to look from bottom up, no longer from top down. Enough is enough. I would like to encourage myself and yourself, try to see the bottom up approach. Every single hadith build up the building and don't go for the maqasid, very helicopter point of view, but we are missing the, they call it missing the trees, if you like. So we have to see from the bottom up, uh, we have to dissect each and every single uh, Quranic verses and hadith to see the teaching of Sharia in everything, in parenthood, in the corruption issue, in the wealth accumulation, in justice, fairness, equity principle that Dr. Ghazali has done the research. In fact, I was we were talking just now, even the meaning of equity was not yet unlocked, the very meaning of equity. Fairness, al-adl, al-ihsan, al-insaf, it could be more than that. It could be a best practice, it could be something which is aimed at removing everything and try to put a new scheme of thinking all together for our current society. How to move forward? Now, this is my a core uh, point of lecture tonight. Uh, you can go away without taking with you everything I have said just now, but don't go away without taking this with you. This is a new finding of my own research. I wanted to write more, I wanted to articulate more. Uh, I wanted to share with you at the first audience throughout the world to know this new theory of Sharia. When, read, when we read the Quran and the Sunnah, for that matter, our mind is always motivated to understand the semantic values of the Quran, the, the linguistic part of it. What kind of language and the, 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 the adabiyat, wa logawiyat, and the istidililat, logawiyah, fil Quran al karim Quite normal, because Quran was revealed in Arabic. So we have no option but to understand Arabic and to be indulged in Arabic. The second focus of our mind all the time, the juristic mind. We like to be juristic. We wanted to create the istimbat. We wanted to extract the, the ruling from this ayah and from that hadith. And we try to see the references of point of view. Sometimes we become more emotional than the scholar themselves. We tend to say, you are wrong, you are wrong, I'm right. The scholars never say that in the past. We tend to take our own view and impose our view on others, which is, not, which is not right. But it doesn't matter. Our mind is always motivated to become very juristic, very uh, legalistic, if you like, uh, in our understanding of the Sharia. The third, the fourth, and the fifth dimension of reading the Quran, the source of law, are missing at the moment. The thematic understanding of the Sharia the constitutional reading of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the best practices that the Qur'an and Sunnah are trying to articulate. The problem of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, brothers and sisters, both of them never mention clearly this is the theme for you, for your survival. Take the example of water. The Qur'an never mentioned take care of your water, preserve it, Build up the reservoir. Make sure the water supply will not be stopped at any point in time. But the Quran metaphorically, metaphorically mentioned about we have created everything from river, from water. When you do the wudu, don't waste your water. The Quran mentioned many other verses, the rain and make sure you have the proper uh, mountain and, and soil for you to absorb the rain. It's about reservoir to sustain the, the water. So we miss the whole theme of the Qur'an and the constitutional reading of the Qur'an. Uh, the verses 2 and 3 of Al-Baqarah, 
Okay, I will stop at that. Uh, I will open the floor to Q&A. 2A3 Al-Baqarah mentioned about what? The longest verse in the Quran. About? Death. What is so special about this ayah? What is the, okay, what is the hukum? You know the hukum, right? Is documenting that optional or obligatory? Huh? Is documenting the debt optional or obligatory? Optional? It should be optional. It cannot be obligatory, okay? You got that, you got F, okay? <laughs> the hukum of bringing the witness two men and one, uh, two uh, male or one male and two female, bringing this shahada, not the number first, the, the hukum of bringing the, the, the witnesses, is that ob obligatory or optional? Optional or obligatory? If the hukum, the principal hukum is optional, the shahada should be more optional. Are you following? It cannot be something higher than the original fact of the case, which is documentation of the debt. Are you following? Okay. Now we come to the numbers of the witness involved. Shahidain, mirijalikum. Two male or one male or two female. Is this number obligatory or optional? And then we come to a very controversial issue. Remember the idealistic point of view, the idea of um, psyche, the mindset will come in. And many, many great scholars will say, this is a must for you to do. You cannot bring one lady. You cannot bring three ladies. You have to bring either two male or combination of one male and two female. Ibn Qayyim has, re has rebutted the argument. I have published an article on that uh, when I was active in uh, university, published by Dewan Bahasa in Pustaka, the 2A3 Al-Baqarah. My point of view is not obligatory. The whole ayah is about irsha, it's about guidance for human being. This, these two aspects, the semantic and the juristic, are common. But I was missing the point as well when I was re <laughs> writing this article. Now I discovered the ayah is not about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't spend whole page or the longest ayah in the Quran just for the sake of hukum. <coughs> But it's about more than that. The importance of that management, the importance of documentation, the importance of this and that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would know, and He is the most knowing uh, you know, uh, of our conduct, that that would become very critical in our modern society throughout the ages. That is something that we need to have person, companies, or even the government, and that it's about the whole thing of our life and that should be treated properly into policy how much you can borrow how much you cannot borrow what will be the government policy to restrict the consumerism in the society because if you don't control it will blow up the whole country uh, take the example of Mauritius uh, the debt to income is more than 300 times the highest debt uh, borrowing country in the world the GDP cannot sustain even the debt even for the next 100 years. So this is the whole thing of debt management in Islam. And it is sharia to some extent. It's not about hukum. Yes, you have to follow the hukum, you have to discuss. But sharia come more than the semantic, juristic. It covers also the thematic, constitutional and best practices. I don't think I have the time to go through into uh, detail, but Perhaps you can um, one day, uh, you know, write or back, we can write together to articulate this uh, full dimension of the Sharia to make the Sharia is not only part of life. The Sharia is life. Sharia hiya al hayat. In lam takun Sharia tu hiya al hayat, fama hiya Sharia la qima talaha. Iza kana al Sharia tu munhasiratan fi al ahkam al khamsa wa fi ahkam mahduda. لا قيمة للشريعة ليست هناك حكمة لله سبحانه وتعالى في هذه الشريعة إذا كانت الشريعة لها مكانة 
بعيده من الحياه التطبيقيه في كل مجالاتها الخطا ليس في الشريعه الخطا فينا نحن نحن اصبحنا مقصرين في فهم معاني وافاق الشريعه الاسلاميه المحاضرة الليلة ما هي إلا انفتاح لأقولنا الشرعية في فحم معنى الشريعة بمعنى الحرفية والمقاصدية والموضوعية التيم والدستورية الكونستيشنال والتطبيقية وحسن الأداء إسلام is about the best performance حسن الأداء لكل من يعيش في هذه في هذا المجتمع اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته